Hi, this will be the last part of the game prop creation tutorial series. Last video we talked about how to create textures in Substance Painter and then we exported those textures out. Now we are going to import our textures into Maya to see what they look like in Maya and then also the process of importing and exporting into Sketchfab to see what it looks like in Sketchfab. Alright, so we've exported our textures from Substance Painter and here is our individual texture maps. We have a base color, a height map, which is the only one we won't use, a metallic map, a normal map, and a roughness map. So I actually don't need the height map. I'm going to delete that one out. But these are the four texture maps that I am going to use. All right, so in Maya, we're going to come in here and open up our Hypershade Material Editor, which is right here. Let that load. And I'm going to come in here to the material editor and create a new Stingray PBS material. I'm going to go ahead and name that. So I'll say Matt Pirate Chest, Material Pirate Chest. Okay. Um, I can go ahead and apply this material to all of my objects. So we'll drag select everything, right click on that material, and choose Assign Material to Selection over here so maybe we can see it. All right. And now we're going to import our texture maps into Maya. So what is important is that our Maya files in the same location as our texture maps. We do not want to have subfolders. So let's take our Maya file and do file save scene as, go to our desktop and put it in the same folder as our texture maps. And we're going to call this one texture, pirate chest texture. There you go. So our Maya file is in the same location as our textures. So that way when we're loading our textures, they're going to load properly no matter when we open it up or where we open it up from. All right, in Maya, we're going to take our Stingray PBS material that we just created. And in the property editor, I'm going to click on Use Color Map, checkbox that, Use Normal Map, Use Metallic, and Use Roughness. So I'm going to use those four maps. And then I'm going to scroll down to the Texture section and import in the color map to the color map checker box. So if I click that, it opens up a file node and I'm going to click on the folder beside image name and go locate uh, my base color map. So that connects that texture map to the texture color map. I'm going to go click back on the material and go import in my normal map. Do the same thing, hit the checker box beside normal, hit the folder beside image name in the file format normal map. Here you go. Okay, you should see the preview updating as we do this. I'm going to go import in my metallic map. Same way, metallic. And then I'm going to click back on my material and import in my roughness map. Roughness. Okay, here we go. Alright, so my material has my four texture maps loaded. And to see this in my viewport, all I'm going to do is hit the six key. Six on the keyboard, I'll turn off my wireframe on shaded, and I should be able to see the textures now on my model. So five is shaded, six is shaded with textures. So there's some subtle differences from Maya to Substance Painter. Things are going to look a little bit more shinier uh, than they do in Substance Painter, and things look a little bit more bluer in Maya than Substance Painter. So we pull this back up, you see the difference. It's still going to show me reflection and everything, but and that's due to Maya's uh, reflection map that it's creating in here. It's a little bit more of a bluer reflection map. If you want to have a Substance Painter look that's more similar to the way Maya's is, back in Substance Painter, we're going to go to the shader, whoop, not shader settings, display settings, and then change the environment map from Panorama to, uh, I think it's called like Mondarin, Mondarin, something like that. And that's going to be similar colors between the two. Now still there will be subtle differences in how shiny and how reflective things are. But that's going to be more close to the blue that we see in Maya. So that's how we display textures, import them back into Maya using the Hypershade and a Stingray PBS material. Checkbox use color, normal, metallic, and roughness. Go down to the textures and load in the individual textures apply the material to all of your objects and then hit the 6 key. 
So displaying in Maya, that finalizes that process. We can do file, save, scene. So the last part of this video, we'll discuss how to uh, import our model into Sketchfab, uh, which is kind of a stripped down version of a modern game engine that uses the PBR structure with materials. And Sketchfab is gonna look more similar to the way things look in Substance Painter. So the only things we need to import our model into Sketchfab are the OBJ or FBX exported 3D model, the same one we used for Substance Painter, and then our final four texture maps. So we've already got everything exported. We can export an OBJ from Maya if you drag select everything and go to File, Export Selection, and export it as an FBX or OBJ. I will say Sketchfab has less issues if you do OBJ files, so let's just save an OBJ just to show you the difference. So I'm going to go back into the Pirate Chest Textures folder and save this out as um, let's see, Pirate Chest Export OBJ. So we'll actually import into Sketchfab the OBJ file instead of the FBX file. So there's our Pirate Chest Export OBJ file and then we just need these four texture maps. All right. So here's Sketchfab, and you got to create an account with Sketchfab, log in, and then there's an upload button. So I'm going to click upload. I'm going to go find my folder, and I'm going to first drag in my OBJ file. Okay, there's a Pirate Chest export OBJ. Let's drag that in and let it update. So it'll say upload files. So let it run through the process. Sketchfab also has Maya plugin export and a Painter plugin export. So you can go to Painter Maya plugin. So you can find the link Substance in Maya, download for Windows, Mac, whatever. Uh, or not, sorry, Substance. Uh, let's do Sketchfab, Sketchfab Maya plugin. Here you go, not Substance. So there's the Maya exporter, okay, uh, and you can also find the same thing for your uh, Substance Painter. So we can export from either of those software directly. This method uh, will import it directly from your web browser as you log in, and it has to process it, so that's what it's doing, and then once it finishes processing, then we can edit the 3D settings. So I'm going to pause the video for a second until it finishes uh, processing and then we'll talk about how to add the materials in. Okay, Sketchfab has told me my model is finished processing. Uh, now we can go to edit 3D models. So we want to add a description. This is a model of a pirate chest. <clears throat> it was modeled in Autodesk Maya and textured in substance painter. All right, we can add categories. Um, let's see. Furniture home, maybe? Sure. Places travel. You can add things that relate to it. So you can say part, chest, something like that. Add some tags. All right, and we'll come back and um, determine how we are publishing this later, but let's go add the materials. So let's go to Edit 3D Settings. Let's see, did I hit Save? So let's do Save first. And let's do Edit 3D Settings. This is Sketchfab's uh, Material Viewer. This is how we can also add lighting. So there's our object. Let's make sure the modeling's coming in how we expect it to, which it looks like it. We'll come back and adjust some other things, but let's go to Materials, and there's my Stingray PBS material. It didn't bring over the name, which is you know not necessary, but it, we should see the same type of channels as what we do in Maya and Substance Painter. So here's where I would import in my individual texture maps. So this is a PBR material, uh, metalness material workflow. So I'm gonna click on the swatch beside base color, choose texture, import texture. And then I'm gonna go find my folder and find my base color map. There you go, let that load. Select that one so my base color is in there. My metalness, I'm going to go manage textures, import texture, 
go find my metallic map. Select my metallic there. I'm going to skip down to says roughness, glossiness, and click on the swatch beside roughness. Manage textures, import texture, roughness. Make sure I click on the roughness one there. Okay, that looks pretty good. And uh, normal, let's go find my normal bump. We'll turn that on. And then click the swatch beside normal, manage textures, import, import normal. And make sure we have our normal selected. So there we go. So now it looks very similar to the way it looks like in Substance Painter. Pretty close there. And all my maps are loading in properly. So we have to make sure we import in our materials properly. Okay, so there's some scene adjustments that we can make with it as well. Um, you know, things like the wireframe. So we can see, look at the wireframe, background. Go look at what kind of background it is. We can change the background color. So we want to choose one that kind of complements everything. So let's do like an orange. That looks pretty good. We can do an environment background as well. So we can kind of see what kind of background we might want to add. But a color is fine. We want to make sure we have good contrast between our model and the background. <clears throat> There's also lighting that we can make some adjustments to as well. There is a default lighting. Uh, we can add custom lights if we want to. Uh, but I'm going to add a ground shadow. Let's see if we can find where it is. There it is. Okay, so ground shadow. So we can change the intensity and change the border fade if we wanted to. Okay, we can change the height. Make sure the height of the shadow matches the bottom of the shadow. We can change the size in case the shadow needs to be changed the direction of it as well. There we go. That's pretty good. All right, we can also change the reflection map that's used to reflect the environment. Right now it's this industrial room, so maybe we'll do this uh, road. See how that changes the reflections and the colors. Change to some of these other ones. Kirby Cove, that one looks kind of interesting. Maybe we'll keep with Kirby Cove there. All right, so we can change the angle of the scene and the light. We can change the brightness. Looks pretty good. Shadow intensities, shadow bias as well. Okay, that looks pretty good. So that way we're creating kind of a finalized look. So there's also post processing. We can turn on um, screen space ambient occlusion, which is the second one. That gives the appearance of things that have like um, more natural bounce back lighting. There's a couple of ones we don't want to you know add too much to this, but we can play around with effects. The last thing to do is save the view. So we can come in here and say, there's our model. Pretty good shadow here. And let's go save view. So I'll take a snapshot and that's what your preview for your model will look like in Substance Painter. Or sub. Oh, ooh, sorry, not Substance Painter, Sketchfab. So let's do save settings and we're gonna do exit. Okay, so you have unlimited amount of uploads as long as you change your download to free. If you don't change your download to free, you only have one upload credit. So change this to free, um, and we're going to publish this, and then we can upload as many different models as we want to. So see there are previews change to the image that we have. So we're going to say anyone on Sketchfab can view this. We're going to say download free, and then save and publish. The model's been published. Got it. See my model. There's a link that I can share with it. So now it's going to open this up. And now I can view my model in Sketchfab. It's going to try to load the textures. I can move around. Uh, I can look at like my inspector, look at wireframe, UV checker, see how well we did there. Individual maps and our final render. So that's how we upload textures with the 3D model to Sketchfab. That'll wrap up this video as far as the process of creating a game ready prop where we discuss polygonal clean modeling, proper UV mapping, custom texture creation, uh, and then finalizing everything until what the final model looks like.